today we will try to uh, review the concepts of rotational motion so that uh, from uh, next week onwards we can uh, deal with uh, torque and moment of inertia okay uh, we have been looking at a uh, lot of uh, uh, objects uh, doing uh, translational motion and we have also looked at uh, objects interacting with each other through collision and uh, now we want to see uh, what happens when these objects are rotating okay so uh, and first we will look at just uh, the object rotating without any translation and then we will try to look at both rotational motion and translational motion together okay we have to uh, assume that uh, we are dealing with rigid bodies okay so with rigid bodies what we mean is that they have a definite shape okay that they do not deform or change the shape when they are uh, doing the certain kind of motion okay so uh, the translation motion uh, we have looked at uh, we have looked at uh, even for this continuous objects that uh, if they are moving we need to understand the idea of center of mass because where the position of center of mass of an object is uh there that is the position where the entire mass of the object is uh, concentrated so if you look at the motion of the center of mass basically you are looking at the motion of this rigid body okay and we considered only translational motion so now we have to uh, go on to the next level and look at the uh, the rotational motion that will happen uh, of this rigid body and uh, then the idea of the axis through which the object is rotating will also come into play okay but essentially you can treat the two motions separately to begin with and then combine them later okay so you can see here the example that an object is just rotating right and then if you combine with it the idea that it can uh, move as well okay and keep the two uh, motions separate and then combine them together and then you have the translation and rotational motion together okay so that is what we are seeing here that the rolling motion is your translation plus your rotational motion if you break down the components okay so uh, for example you have a, a cd drive right and it is a rigid body and suppose it is uh, rotating right this uh, object is necessarily not changing any shape okay and let's understand that suppose uh, you have uh, an object like a balloon right and if you are throwing the balloon okay and it is tossed you can see that the shape of the balloon changes right depending on the gravitational force and the the resistance okay that it is facing okay so uh, a balloon filled with water is basically an example of not a rigid body okay so uh, that's what we mean with what a rigid body is okay so again so these three types of motion we have this translational motion okay object is just moving along a straight line and the same object can do rotational motion as well and then you can combine the two and see how you know an object is uh, doing a motion like in a trajectory uh, when you have both of these motions together okay understand how to deal with rotational motion and like i was mentioning you have probably been exposed to some of these ideas before in your school that uh, just like we have uh, in newton's laws of motion uh, in a straight line we have uh, the rotational analogs to the to the same quantities okay when we are considering rotational uh, motion so again we have to uh, see and identify the axis through which it is rotating okay so for example in this case that you have of a disk okay we have to uh, choose our axis and let's say for convenience we are choosing the center position at o okay and so right now this object is basically rotating uh, in the plane of the screen and the axis is basically coming out of your screen okay so it is perpendicular to this picture okay and if you can see the example before be clear right the axis is coming out of this plane in which this object is rotating okay so that is what we are saying so now in this case as the object is rotating we can define a reference line let's say ox okay so that is a reference line and along this reference line 
we are uh, measuring a value for certain length r okay that we are saying let's take radius of r from this center position o okay and that will correspond to this dot point right here okay so that is this position that we have here all right so now there are some characteristics that you can understand from the motion of this point as it, this object is rotating okay so one of the things that you can see is that uh, as the object moves for certain time t it will cover certain angle theta okay now all the points okay all the points along this circle that are marked with these dashed points right they all these points are covering the angle theta okay as long as they are lying along this reference line okay so any point that you have let me mark them here okay. point here when uh, the object is rotating suppose it gets translated to this position here this angle is theta as well okay similarly this point here when it moves from this position all the way to this position here again this angle is also theta okay so this reference line it gives us an uh, kind of idea of what kind of motion different objects will be doing uh, that will lie in the same plane that is rotating okay so uh, again uh, we can define okay Uh, quantities like angular displacement angular velocity angular acceleration and these will be analogous to your uh, concepts in uh, newton's laws of translation motion okay so let's let's look at these quantities what they are okay and where they come from all right so uh, this basics need to be very very clear because uh, you will use them later on and uh, if your basics are not clear then you might end up making a mistake later okay so angular displacement how are we defining this term we are saying that uh, when this point p is sweeping an angle in certain time okay that angle that it is sweeping is that value theta okay and that is the angular displacement that this point p is doing in certain time t okay and if you look at the relationship between the radius from your axis of the center okay of uh, where the object is rotating and the arc that this uh, object is covering which is l okay so we can uh, approximately write the relationship that this angular displacement theta will be l divided by r okay so this is an approximate relationship all right and uh, the way we try to relate this is that uh, theta this angle is uh, basically one radian if the length of the arc that is covered which is this arc here okay is equal to the value of r so if l is equal to r then we have l by r is 1 and that essentially is defined as what is one radian okay so uh, one radian will be the angle swept out when the arc length is equal to the radius okay so there you go you have a definition of radian okay and um, again from here only we get the idea that uh, you know if there is an object and it is going around a full circle then the complete angle that it is covering is 360 degrees and uh, the arc length r for the full circle will be 2 pi r and then we divided by r so you get 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees okay and that's how we come up with the relationship that you know how is degree related to an angle okay that 1 degree will be essentially 2 pi by 360 radians okay so whenever you are doing calculations from now on you have to ensure that you are using the radian mode in your calculator okay so please ensure that so i have noticed lot of students what they will do is they will use uh, their phone to do the calculations and the phone will not be in radian mode and you will end up making a mistake okay and remember uh, during examinations uh, when they are conducted in uh, uh, on campus uh, you will not be allowed to use your phone anyways okay so everybody should have their calculators uh, uh, all the calculators below ms 100 are allowed in the examination 
so um, again so just like uh, the idea before if an object is moving from position a to position b similarly we can define the angular displacement between two points that is theta 1 and theta 2 okay and uh, because necessarily you don't have to always start from zero right so you can already have an uh, angle that means the object might already be here and you are considering the motion of the object from this position to this position okay so that essentially will be your change in angle okay or that is your change in displacement okay so if we if we consider how the object is moving between two points and those can be any two points like theta 1 and theta 2 uh, which are the uh, angular positions then we can define our angular velocity okay and the angular velocity will just be uh, defined as uh, uh, delta theta by delta t that means the change in your uh, angle divided by the time taken between uh, moving between those two angles okay and uh, the average uh, value is denoted by this bar okay so you have omega bar which is the average angular velocity okay and just like before where you had uh, translation motion you have uh, the idea of instantaneous angular velocity that an at any instant what is the angular velocity and that essentially will give uh, rise to uh, your time being very very short that you are considering a very very short time uh, for the motion to happen so your limit will uh, tend to zero for the time that you are considering and uh, then it will just be the angle that it moves okay so from here you know that omega is basically your uh, angle divided by time so it, it has units of radians per second okay so this angular velocity is a very very important uh, idea to consider uh, in solving problems and later on you will realize why well the reason the reason we like omega so much is because later you will realize that uh, it is a commonality factor between a particle that might be at position here and at a position here is okay they all will have the same value of omega okay so when you are considering uh, a complicated system it is easier to deal with omega because every everything might have a different velocity but the omega might be the same okay so similarly like we have uh, angular velocity we have the idea of angular uh, acceleration and uh, the angular acceleration uh, is given by alpha and uh, now the angular acceleration will be the change in the angular velocity over a certain time okay so you will have delta omega by delta t which will be given by omega okay and the units will be radians per second square okay and just like before you have the idea of instantaneous angular acceleration at any instant in time and for that you have to reduce the time to a very very small value so that you are looking at just one instant in time okay and so you get limits of uh, your uh, delta t tends to zero and the same delta omega by delta t okay so uh, and remember all, all these uh, they are valid only if you consider theta and radians okay so don't make a mistake of choosing degrees okay so um, i think you might be familiar with uh, another construct uh, and that is the relationship between angular and linear quantities all right so uh, we have seen uh, angular velocity and angular acceleration and um, we have also seen uh, what linear velocity and linear acceleration is when we discussed uh, newton's laws before okay so uh, surely there's there must be some relationship between them and um, if you if you look at uh, the construct here okay the velocity with which an object is moving at uh, along this line of uh, that you are considering right it is just given by the delta l by the delta t okay so and delta l is the arc length that it is covering right so that is how we defined it before okay and um, the delta l is nothing but the r times delta t theta right so that is the value of r times the the angle that it is covering okay so if we substitute that value in here basically we get that v is equal to r delta theta by delta t or v is equal to r times omega okay so that is a very important relationship to remember right of how your uh, linear velocity is related to your angular velocity okay and it is dependent on this radius r okay so again what i was trying to mention before is that if you notice the difference between points here and points here okay what is the main difference you are seeing that the velocity 
at position A is different than velocity at position B. Why? Because they have different radius. Okay. However, the omega for a particle that is at this position and the omega for a particle that is uh, at the surface is the same. Okay. And that is why we try to eliminate V and write everything in terms of omega. Okay. And that makes our life simpler. Okay. When we deal with problems. All right. So uh, again, uh, uh, your um, relationship that uh, we would like to summarize is that uh, your linear velocity is related to your angular velocity by the term of R. Okay, so of course you can again picture this uh, uh, by uh, just thinking that you are trying to go around in a circle. Okay, and uh, if you want to uh, go around in a circle, and if you are standing suppose at this position here to complete a circle, it will take you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if you keep your speed a constant, then it will take you certain time. Okay, let's say it, it takes you one minute to complete the circle. Right now, if you want to complete the same circle uh, in a minute, but now you are at this position at the surface, then you can understand that you will have to run much, much faster to complete this entire uh, perimeter and come back to this position. Okay, so if you want to uh, complete the circle in the same time, you will have to run faster. Okay, so 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 that is the the way the um, individual particles in the system are moving okay so they they are they are moving at a different speed okay depending on uh, where they are located from this center axis of rotation all right uh, similarly we have the idea of acceleration right and for acceleration actually we have uh, two terms we have the tangential acceleration that is uh, coming into play and we have the radial acceleration okay and uh, then we also have the angular acceleration alpha which we have already discussed okay so there are so many terms which, which are confusing in times but uh, we need to understand where they all are coming from right so the tangential acceleration essentially tells you the direction of motion where this object is heading okay and it is just given by delta v by delta t Okay, and the relationship between the tangential acceleration and your angular acceleration again is of the form that A is equal to R times alpha. Okay, so again, angular acceleration alpha is the same for all points on this on this object. Okay, on this wheel, everywhere the value of alpha is the same. Okay, however, the value for the tangential acceleration will be different, and it will depend on the value of r that you're considering okay so if the radius of the wheel is shorter then the tangential acceleration will be different okay so that's one acceleration okay and um, again you can consider the centripetal acceleration which is given by a of r and it's also known as the radial acceleration and it is given by v square by r okay and i'm sure you're familiar with this expression and uh, we already saw that v is equal to r omega and so you get that uh, your uh, centripetal acceleration is r omega square okay so you people tend to use either of these relationships okay but we prefer to use omega uh, like i mentioned because omega is the same for all the particles anywhere on this wheel okay now uh, if we have a motion okay where the object is doing translation and it is doing rotation okay so then at that point of time you have to consider total acceleration okay and then the total acceleration will be just the sum of this tangential acceleration plus your centripetal acceleration okay so um, we have to use the appropriate term when we are considering the appropriate kind of motion okay and remember your uh, rotation of this wheel it might be accelerating right it there is nothing that is uh, telling us that uh, you know the speed of let's say a vehicle will be constant maybe the car is accelerating and in that case you have to consider both the terms okay then um, there are other terms um, like um, uh, the relationship of frequency and uh, omega and um, 
uh, we know that frequency is uh, revolutions per second and it is related to omega by the relationship omega divided by 2 pi or omega equals to 2 pi f and um, uh, when we are considering rotation uh, we have to consider what is the time for one complete revolution okay and uh, we had earlier mentioned uh, if you remember that when we are considering rotational motion which is for example uh, you know you have a center position here and uh, an object which is uh, going around in a circle and every time it completes one rotation okay my center position is a little bit off so excuse me on that okay so wherever this object a is completely one complete uh, rotation essentially it it is doing a simple harmonic motion because it is going uh, uh, a complete circle and coming back to its original position okay so it's like a displacement that is happening from its uh, central position and then it repeats the motion back and forth okay so so uh, we have a very analogous uh, relationship of your uh, rotational motion to your uh, simple harmonic motion okay and that's where you can see the relationship of omega when we consider simple harmonic motion we consider what is the value of omega remember in terms of spring we had the omega is square root of k over m okay so same idea is here we have omega now it's the angular frequency okay and um, this uh, angular frequency is different than angular speed okay so you don't want to confuse both okay so you have to be very careful all right and um, again the time period will be 1 over f and uh, it is 2 pi over omega okay so you can think of it in other words right if you if you consider uh, the speed of uh, uh, with which a thing is moving okay and so it, it does 2 pi revolution and then it's divided by time okay so you can consider it that way as well but we like angular frequency mainly because uh, later on you will realize in physics that uh, in uh, most of the areas like quantum mechanics or whether you are dealing solid state physics or you know when you are dealing with uh, spectroscopy when you are talking about frequency you are basically uh, talking about energy of the system okay because there is a direct relationship between the frequency omega and energy okay so they are very closely related to each other okay get this one to one analog relationship right so when we talk about displacement in translation motion we have uh, you know distance traveled x right and we say x is equal to v0 t plus half at square okay so that is our kinematics equation similarly we can write an analog for what is happening in rotational motion okay so the analog for x is that there is some uh, angle that is traversed and that angle is theta okay similarly uh, when you have uh, linear motion you are talking about velocity and when you have angular motion you are talking about angular velocity okay and um, similarly when you are talking about uh, translation motion you have acceleration when you are talking about rotational motion you have the angular acceleration which is alpha and we just saw the relationships of each of these with the other quantities okay what we can do now is we can try to relate these quantities in terms of um, the relationship that we had for kinematics equation and we can write down the kinematics equation when we are considering rotational motion okay so when we had the linear uh, uh, motion we had the uh, these equations for displacement we had the equations for velocity we had the equations that is related relating acceleration to initial velocity and we had the equation for the average velocity right similarly when you are dealing angular uh, motion you can write the relationships of omega in terms of initial um, angular velocity and uh, angular acceleration okay so these are the four equations uh, they have one to one similarity with uh, your linear uh, equations okay so you guys should be familiar with it more problems uh, let's attempt this problem right here okay and um, it's a problem of uh, a wheel that is rotating and uh, the value is given uh, for alpha that is the angular acceleration is 3.5 radians per second square okay and uh, uh, its initial angular speed at time t equal to 0 is given okay 2 radians per second okay so in part a you have to calculate uh, the value for the angular displacement that uh, it will do in 2 seconds 
and then you have to calculate the number of revolutions it takes okay and uh, then you also have to find what will be the value of omega after t equals to 2 seconds okay so we have to use the equation delta theta is omega 0 t plus half alpha t square okay so omega 0 is 2 time is 2 seconds all right so that is 4 and you have one half alpha 3.5 times t square so you should get 11 radians as your answer okay Gaurav and Tia are getting c is equal to 9 and that is correct right omega is equal to omega 0 plus alpha t Sivan has got b is equal to 1.75 revolutions that is correct as well okay 